All right, everybody. Look at my pumpkin, my peeking pumpkin. I'm so excited. So just let me know that you can hear me. That's all I need to know. It's showing up good on the computer, but you know, you never know. Plus we have a minute or two, two minutes till we can start. Misha, hi Misha, can hear you. All right. So this design is from Missouri Star and it was really fun to do. It is squares and triangles. That's it. That's it. Different orange ones, different black ones. It was fun to do. Now, I didn't do a perfect job and that's okay. I am not worried about that. It still looks really good. No one is going to look really close up. And I've been waiting to get my um, upgrade <laughs> to do it on the machine, but I'm tired of waiting and I want to see how good this baby looks. So awesome. So before we get started, let's have a quilt chat. I don't know if you guys want to see what's uh, up and coming to, I'm ripping, can you hear that? Ugh. To OML on Friday. And these are my tester blocks. So again, it is traditional blocks. And I was playing around with fabric and a little bit of bling going on there. You gotta love it. But isn't that cute? Presents and then trees and then red. Lots of folded fabric and lots of hand done quilting. So you guys all have to let me know what you guys think of that. Loud and clear. All right. Thank you, Karen, for sure. Um, hi from Ireland. Ah, oh, lovely. Hi, Sue and everyone. Hello, hello. Okay. The, as you could tell, my iPads with the chat is behind me, so I'll be able to watch that. Watch the chat in a few minutes, so I'll get caught up. So that's what's upcoming. Uh, I've done a couple more blocks of it, and it's really cute. Now, on to today, and clear blue tiles, and here's what I did. So, once you finish your quilt top, you need to put the backing on, and you need to add batting in between, of course. One thing to remember for sure, you need at least, what is that, five inches, four, five, six inches, uh, so when you were hooping it, you could go off the edge. If you were to trim it, you would have a hard time getting this straight. So we don't, uh, we don't want to do that. So it all the way around, we'll be cutting off the excess once we square it up. Now I've been having issues with, um, basting, uh, I've been using a basting spray and it's just, nasty stuff. I don't like it. The temporary spray doesn't do it. I'm not going to fuse anything because I want this kind of like, you know, old fashioned puffy look. So I tried this thing. So this is a basting gun and it is like, you know, when you go to the grocery store or sorry, clothing store and you get one of these little things to hold, to hold your socks or something together that's what it is and i'm pretty happy with it it's uh pretty useful it seemed to hold everything nicely and you just go around and you ka chunk <laughs> that's kind of the sound it makes you just stick it in all the way the fabric has to go up to here and then you ka chunk and it was uh something like thirty dollars thirty dollars at Michael's and um, these were six. So these are the refill of the ones. And I used almost a whole thing for this, but I found it very helpful. Let me check for questions. I could probably put it over here a little bit more so I can see. Um, love Kimberbell clear blue tiles. Yes, yes, Alberta, hello from Alberta, another Canadian. Um, definitely the, need that extra edge. Yeah, it's really important. Um, Misha says I need one of those. This is really cool. 
I was testing it out to see again because I, I'm not going to sew it together or, you know, I wasn't going to stitch in the ditch this one. And uh, I found it really works. It really works. So, yeah. So, on to today's work. Um, we are... Oh, let me move my awesome blocks. I don't know which one I like better. I like the quilting block, but I was having so much fun with these ones. So nice folded fabric and I made a green one and then a green one of this one to match. So it should look pretty, pretty cute. Pretty cute. Nancy finally made it. Well, welcome. So planning this out. Uh, a lot of people do it a different a whole bunch of different ways personally i was gonna do this on the new luminaire 3 upgrade but i don't have it yet and this peeking pumpkin was peeking at me the whole time so and he's like are you gonna quilt me are you gonna quilt me so finally i said yes so i'm gonna use the clear blue tiles and uh, Kimberbell designs. There are links in the descriptions. Again, Peking Pumpkin or Peekaboo Pumpkin, sorry, uh, is from Missouri Star and this is Kimberbell. So why 8 by 12? I, I don't really want to do any quilt math because, you know, math. Uh, the reason why I picked this size is only because I have this size. So I have an eight by 12 hoop. And so I, that's actually, I have the big, 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 big hoop, but Kimberbell doesn't make designs that big. So there's no point hooping it. It would make it a lot more difficult. So yeah, I was a math teacher and I still love these clear blue tiles. Really, honestly, you get to the business of stitching. Now, originally, I was just going to stitch one, but I was having so much fun, I did two rows of it. And I, I thought it was great. So this is the thinking of why I picked this size, working with what I've got and what's available. And so I just kind of went with it from that. So if anyone's wondering, I did not do any math to figure out any math to figure anything out. Now you can start at the middle. You can start at one side in the middle, which is what I did on this one. Now bear with me because I'm going to move it around a little bit. I did a couple of little tricks to make this, the hooping a little bit easier. So I figured out I counted how many times this would go, this one, this way. So up and down and then across, just rough. And if you have any leftover, like at one edge, then you don't, you can use another clear blue tile and tack it in. But we'll talk about that a little bit after because I do have two inches. So one row left over at the top. So it didn't work out perfectly, but that's okay. Um, so I kind of figured it out from there and I just kind of played around with it. Big quilts, you should probably start from the middle and then move, you know, one side than the other because there's going to be a shifting of the fabric. But this guy was, you know, down pretty well and it's not actually that big. So, um, I, I did something kind of interesting. I don't know if other people do it, but I found it really sped things along. So again, I figured out how many are going to go up and down. So there was a middle one. So we'll just say it's here so you guys can see it. It's kind of crooked, but, and I lined it up. So this, this was at the edge, but you can't see it. And I have to pull everything around to do it. Um, and I figured out you know, for this one, it's on this row, you could measure, and it's on this row. And I put some masking tape all the way across uh, and made sure it was straight. So every time I marked it and every time I hooped it, it was a whole lot easier. So the way it worked out was when I was lining everything up, I had the masking tape here 
and I have the masking tape at the bottom and it saved me a whole lot of time. Now I did the next row using the masking tape just on the bottom. I just left it. Uh, I feel it saved me a whole lot of time, a whole lot of fiddling around and I thought it was great. It just made it a lot easier. So size doesn't really matter in this case. I like the masking tape idea. It's, it worked. It was just right there. I had it, it was bright yellow too. And I thought, oh, that'll make it a whole lot easier. So I had this bright yellow masking tape all the way across, but super fast to line it up. That's it. And it worked for, just happened to be in this quilt that it worked all the way around. So, so these templates are wonderful. I am sure the bells and whistles of the Luminaire 3 is going to be really cool, but I don't have it. And I always say work with what you've got. Uh, dime, you can use the print and stick. If I didn't have these and a design that I wanted, I would use the print and stick templates uh, because you can just, you know, plunk it on where you want to go, mark it, mark it with uh, one of their circles anything like that and uh, it makes it easier but clear blue tiles I did want swirls I don't like all of the Kimberbell ones but I do like quite a few of them the Halloween ones make me happy and what I did is you don't want to overmark because I mark in chalk now you can use some kind of a pen if you want um, an air soluble or water soluble, but I like this guy. He's nice and cheap and he is easy to use. My replacement monster hoop will be here tomorrow. I'm so excited. Monster hoop makes a big difference. That's, that's what I was uh, basing it on. That's where I started. What size hoop do I have? Well, I have the very biggest one, but they don't have design. So what's next? 8 by 12 there we go I don't have a ton of them I'd love to have every single one of them but I don't so I'm working on it it'll get there eventually so I have my masking tape I have my clear blue tiles what's next well I figured out one two three four across just about covers it so I started on the other side let's see yeah, you can see some of it. I started on the other side and I held it up to the edge and I marked it. And then I went to the next one and I marked it and I'm just using chalk so it'll just rub off and I'm using um, blue chalk. And what I did was I made, you can see it right there, I made a marking point at the edge so I knew where to line up the next one and don't do the whole thing because it's chalk it'll probably rub off we don't we don't want to do that and uh just i marked a row because again this is a small one and because i'm using the magnetic hoops that i'm not you know re-hooping everything uh the other thing is the d this design and this is just called swirls uh, takes like six minutes to stitch out. So I really made a lot of headway doing this. So is everyone with me so far? Um, edge to edge quilting. This looks like edge to edge quilting, but you don't have to worry about matching up. I'll have to dig for it, but one, one piece in one row, I was up too high and I went, oh, you can really see it on the back. And I went, oh, that's not good. But Again, I'd have to find it. So yeah, I'm not going to worry about it at all. So I'm going to do one over here because we're going to hoop it. Normally I would start at that end because that's what I was doing, but it's too hard. It's going to end up falling on the floor on the camera and we don't really, um, uh, we don't really have to do that. So the clear blue tiles, awesome different sizes i tested these out when i first got them and i did something that i've always been nervous about i made a b thing for beatrice 
and it had about a two inch border and I embroidered uh, bees on it using the clear blue tiles and marking and I did it in bright yellow so I was really living on the embroidery edge with that one and uh, it looks amazing it looks absolutely amazing Robin hi you're late but you're here so re quick recap for Robin uh, peekaboo quilt from Missouri Star it was a lot of fun to do uh, the quilting designs are from um, Kimberbell clear blue tiles also Kimberbell swirls is what I called it make sure you leave extra on the sides and the bottom and we're gonna see exactly why as well because we're gonna be doing the bottom piece we're gonna hoop it so again I would normally start on that side I don't think it really matters there's no real connections and because you can see right here hopefully am I on no I'm not on um, sorry I moved the camera to be able to do this so I got to keep checking if I'm on or off so I used orange believe it or not I used orange it really stands out on the black squares but not on the orange squares so um, basically you know don't unpick anything it's it's not that big of a deal if they're off like it, you won't be able to see it well enough if I used like black or red or something bright um, then you know maybe maybe not <laughs> maybe not so go ahead and mark everything and again if you're going across and you have say half left at the end then there'll be another clear blue tile that you can use to mark with and fill it in completely so that makes it a whole lot easier to do so don't worry just start if you're doing something big start in the middle if you're doing something small like this it just doesn't really matter masking tape was the other thing that I found I should have left it on so I could have showed you guys but I'll do that on my next one um, just to show you it just oh it was wonderful it was wonderful so for this one um, I'm going to put my hoop in under rather and I'm going to move my clear blue tile and it was really nice when I was doing it before I'm feeling for the hoop we're going to go over a little bit but it doesn't matter we're okay with it there so I'm just kind of you know feeling around am I off yeah I'm probably off camera there we go feeling around we want to get it straight I'm aiming for this one and we want it in the middle so when I had the masking tape I would just line it up by feel to the masking tape and done and it was nice so I like to feel around and you can have a pretty good idea of where it's gonna go um, where the hoop edge is so you know it doesn't have to be perfect at this stage now for the rest of them I don't take it off the machine so this is gonna be our first our first go and that's probably not bad except for there it needs to come down quite a bit quite a bit and what I was looking for when I was doing them before see I knew it this was wrong this part at the top oh, let me pull it down I knew this part was wrong because too much of the design above was showing and then I know that the swirls that I'm gonna stitch are gonna go over it and we don't want that so I'm gonna move it it's just by eye it's easier doing it from that end maybe I will do it from that end because I might get squished out so it's easier doing it from one because when you go to the next one you want to be able to see just a little bit of it in your hoop and then you know you have yourself positioned right and I don't I don't want to get overlaps it's just gonna be awkward for me because the way the table is for the camera 
but I'm going to muddle through. So let's just start by putting this down and I'm way off. So let's move it around. So just again, bear with me. I did my first hooping on my big cutting table so nothing would fall or, fall or you know, mess up. So again, I've got the top ones there and see, I'm still off. It's kind of hard to do because I have to hold it. I don't want to let go. I don't want to let go. And this is looking pretty good. It should probably go down a bit more because I think that's too much. We're almost there. Almost got it. Now for this one, it because it, it's the first one, first of all, but it doesn't have to be perfect. I really don't want my designs to overlap, but that's okay. Now I have my thingies here, whatever they are, the, the basting thingies. So everything should hold down. I do have a boo-boo here, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to fix it after. I just forgot to this time. The other thing, before you even bring it anywhere near to your machine, go on each side, each everything, and make sure that the top of the hoop matches the bottom of the hoop. It is far too easy to put the top on and it feels like it's connected properly but it isn't and you will hit metal so never 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 stitch without checking that first i do it all the time the next thing to check is to make sure that nothing is folded over because you have extra here you have extra here we want to keep everything out of the way so, okay, before I take it to the machine, see I'm checking again because I'm paranoid. Um, are there any questions? Uh, car watching is difficult. <laughs> I haven't used my hoop on the Epic 2 yet. The monster hoop. Uh, for quilting and for just about everything else, the they are worth their weight in gold. It's, it's delightful. Now, I have a um, new product from Dime and it is, have you guys heard of the weightless quilter? Because that thing is amazing. So just bear with me while I'm fixing this. Um, I have a, the Wil weightless quilter mini and it is absolutely perfect for my desk setup. I don't have a huge desk for McDreamy or McDreamy sorry i'm sorry i'm gonna get in trouble for that one for captain jack um it's all about the cameras more more than about the the space um and it was pretty i could do it but it was pretty difficult so now they have a smaller version and i absolutely love it so what i've done here is i've just folded everything you can use clips whatever you want for this side, you could use the, the mini quilter thingy. And I don't have it set up because I didn't think I could do it. So let's go to the machine. And I will bring this over and show you what I do for this. Now, there's a lot extra. But once I get it set up, then... You guys can watch me struggle. I'm struggling. Sometimes I do go around to the other side if that is going to help, like to gently pull stuff through. You don't want to be rough. You don't want to, you know, run out of patience. If someone, you know, kids screaming, dogs are barking, it's not the time to be doing in the hoop quilting because you have to you have to be patient and i'm trying really hard not to hit the camera because i noticed today when i was doing all this stitching i hit the camera a lot so i i don't know if i could have done that any more awkwardly but you know what it's done it is done so you can see my folded parts here this is when the quilter weightless quilter would be handy now before we stitch make sure you check that there's nothing 
down. You want to check all four sides that there's nothing that is going. See, I almost had a little piece going under the hoop there. You want to double check that before you even start. Now, we are a little bit off, so I'm going to move a little bit. Uh, la, la, layout. I am going to move it up a little bit and see if I can't. Nope, that's as far as I can go, but I'm okay with that because I think it's going to look great. Before I stitch, I've got to cut off these things because I don't really want to stitch through them. And be careful when you're snipping these guys off. These are the little basting things that you don't cut the fabric. Ask me how I know. I did it a couple times. So, um, and I'll get the bottoms out after. Um, I didn't take them off beforehand because I still don't want my quilt to move. And that's all of them. Now, if you wanted, this is where the monster hoops are just delightful. That to fix it up a little bit, that's all you have to do. Just in the middle, you can pull. You don't want to stretch anything, but you shouldn't be. But before you start stitching, make sure that you check every part of your hoop to make sure it's lined up. See, now that was easy and I got it pretty much lined up. I want everything just a bit tighter. Now it's awkward because I'm doing the bottom. That's why I was gonna do the middle so I wouldn't look like I'm struggling, but you know, I am, so there we go. Now you can trace, you can use the template, you can use anything. I'm just gonna go. This is what I did before. I'm gonna be a slight amount off, but it's okay. Now I should have pulled that a bit. There we go, just in the nick of time. There we go. I should have stopped it probably. And this is a six minute stitch. So um, super easy to do and it looks amazing. Okay, let's try to avoid that. So it got caught up a little bit and ripped some of my stitches. That's the first time that's happened. Um, but that's okay. So now it's pulled a little bit and the thing is to be really careful. Okay, so it's kind of sewed it together. The important thing is not to panic. Do not panic. There's no need for it. All right, so I have a little mishap there and it's pulled it out a little bit. So I'm going to get some tape and I'm going to tape that down, just masking tape, um, because you can see it's pulled out some of the stitches when it did that, uh, which is fine. And I'm going to tape it down because we don't want it to do that again. Uh, and even if it's not perfectly on the way it was, it's still going to be okay. So let's back it up. I would, um, because of things like that happening, I would not suggest walking away from your machine. And it's okay to stitch over the tape. I'd rather pick out a little bit of stuff beforehand than worrying about it after. Okay, looks like I got it pretty much smack on which I'm happy with, and now we've eliminated that program problem. So I'm gonna stop my machine, and, because you don't wanna do this while it's stitching, I'm just gonna straighten out the back a little. I think that's better, okay. And then let it go, there we go. Uh, what's going on in the chat? Hi, Sue. I've been here from the start, but been feeding a baby finch. Oh, lovely. So pleased you were doing this as I want to do my own quilt, but have never seen it done before. It is easier than you think. And I really enjoyed watching this come together this morning. Um, marking it, just have more room than I did. It's 
it's really awkward when everything falls all over the place like that but and just be patient and it's just a matter of lining it up planning it out if you have any extra spaces left over sort of thing then there's other tiles to fill it in so it's good i was going to susan brown oh i was going to try a table runner first yeah absolutely it's um it's easier and perfect uh actually i i kind of i know my machine has a lot of bells and whistles and whatnot but this was just so darn easy that i mean if i like the kimber bell designs i often do my own um or use dimes that that would probably work um but i can do this too so let me see close up there you go close up it's a little blurry a little blurry I sewed part of my target paper templates to the quilt top, was able to stop the machine. Well, you know, that happens. I mean, that happens. Uh, I've done that before with the snowman stickers and it's like, what? What did I do? Um, still have the sticky stuff on the quilt. The best way to get the sticky off. Uh, it shouldn't be that sticky on it, but I don't know. I would think just soap and water and a little bit of gentle scrubbing would get it off. Now you can still see my chalk marks. That's when the, the blue is handy. Um, but that's what I prefer to use. I don't know. I think using like even a air soluble marker scares me <laughs> because I think what if it doesn't come out then I have all these stupid lines all over everything uh yeah Ooh, we had a big drop off why did everyone drop off I hope Santa will bring me a 6x10 magnet hoop yeah awesome Santa I have a Santa mom but I've heard Santa mom is um like everyone else, we're all kind of broke, so it's going to be a skinny, skinny Christmas. But it's always the thought that counts, so. Yes. So I have three of them. Uh, I have the big, 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 big hoop, because that is for some big quilting, and it is a huge time saver, which is awesome. So I definitely had to have that one. It is actually a little bit easier to handle than the one that the big, 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 big hoop that comes with the machine, I found anyways. And then I have the 8x12, so not quite as big, but not too small either. And then I have the 8x8 because I use that one all the time. So I have three of them and I use them. And again, that's why I picked this. Now, we might go off the edge a little bit, so just keep an eye out. We don't want it to get caught underneath. I have not, honestly, I have not had a problem so far with any of it doing that. So I'm not that worried, but just keep your hand on the button if, you're, if you are. See, it goes pretty nicely. I would not walk away after all this quilting. It's kind of nerve wracking after all the time I spent sewing this baby to uh, be quilting it. And what if you don't like the quilting? Well, or what if you wreck it? You're not going to wreck it. It's just sewing. So you don't have to worry about it. Checking in with a glass of wine. Woohoo! I am going to be sewing some carpenter carpenter's wheels today if you don't know what that is you'll see it and friday i guess saturday we'll be stitching out those other ones that i did um it's awesome if you guys have any requests what traditional blocks you want done with you know custom quilting and whatever uh let me know in the comments when the video's done and i can have them there Someone on Saturday suggested the basket 
quilt block. So the traditional ones, uh, that's what we can do. So the basket one, that was definitely on my list. I have one of my um, great aunt, great aunt or grandma or great grandma. Mm, I'll have to ask about that. Anyways, a very old quilt and all hand done and it's absolutely beautiful. So I kind of want me to do that. I did a California King. It took me 217 hoopings. Woo! It was a big job, but the results were amazing. Yeah, absolutely. I am really happy with how this turned out. Now look at that. That's it. It's done. Happy music. All right, let's back off the camera just so you can see. Now this is where these hoops shine. So I'm going to take this completely off because uh, otherwise I'll have myself in the way. And I'm going to put it right there. Now it's a little bit awkward because I'm on the bottom edge, but that's okay. Bear with me. Got everything nicely rolled up. And I'm not really unhooping it. I am just doing this. So again, I do the feely thing. That should be just about right. Pretty good. This is when the quilter thingy helps. And might be a little crooked, but that's okay. It's because it keeps sliding. And top, put the top part on. And this is what I do. I kind of slide it along and I'm not too far off. So even it up, we can pull it into place. And while we're doing that, we're going to double check. It needs to be over a bit because I have too much here. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it is too much of the stitching we just did and I don't want it to overlap although honestly it's really not the end of the world if it does so I'm not that worried okay so I've got the needle now let's just straighten everything up you can see it pulls a little bit but because these hoops are awesome it's easy to fix and as I'm doing this I am double checking everything to make sure nothing is up underneath. And what's the other thing? Check to make sure your hoop, the top and the bottom are even. Let's go back here. Just want to tighten it up a little bit. And we're pretty close on, pretty even, and we're not too far off might have a little too much showing at the top and don't forget if you're using the basting thingies make sure you remove them and remove them because you don't want i don't want judy quilt to have a panic attack because there's something bouncing around on the hoop um but also you don't want it to get stuck and have your needle you know kind of mess up so I shouldn't have any edge problems on this one, but hey, you never know. I'm going to be sitting here watching. So there's another one. There's another one. These things are so easy to remove. I think it's awesome. So I'm pretty happy with that. Again, it really doesn't have to be 100% perfect. Um, don't sweat it just enjoy it and I find this completely enjoyable so here we go now I do want to pull that a little bit and I'm going to stop my machine so when my hoop came back I noticed it's kind of weird right here so just a quick pause and I'm a little close right there but I think it's going to look good now before I stitch guess what checking my hoop again that's fine all right sorry captain jack okay so while this is stitching out do you guys have any questions about doing this now you do not have to have these amazing hoops 
you can use your regular hoops. I just find this is super easy. So that's why I work with what I've got and I found it really easy. I whipped through this whole thing today, a couple of hours. So everyone good? I am gonna have a little drink. And what beautiful fabrics. Well, thank you, Sharon. It is a kit from Missouri Star. So it comes with all these fabrics. There's also a big quilt too, by the way. Um, the same thing. I didn't get that one. I think it was sold out. But it comes with all the fabric instructions, the matching backing fabric. I don't know if you guys noticed that it matches and binding. So it's a full thing. I really, really, really enjoy quilt kits. Um, the new Tula pink one I was a little bit floored about, but that's okay. Uh, ever have bobbin issues with not catching and needle on threading? Uh, not on this machine. I have had it, uh, especially on the multi-needle machines. And usually it's uh, because the tails are being cut too short and it just pulls it out. I often do it like if I'm rehooping or doing something like that, that it happens by accident. So now look, we got half of the bottom done already. Isn't that awesome? I love it. I have to fix this one. Uh, awesome. So quilting in the hoop is easy and fun and absolutely beautiful. You don't need a big long arm to do this. Just a hoop. Um, again, I do recommend these hoops because it is so much easier and uh, so much easier that you don't have to unhoop it and tighten the hoop and, you know, make sure it's perfect. It's easier to just pull and have it set. See, it's not even, mine isn't even perfect. I'm not going to worry about it. Do the best you can. Really not going to show. So don't forget to give the thumbs up. Yeah, please. If you like this video, then go ahead and tell me and like it. And remember, if you want to see um, if you have any suggestions or ideas for traditional quilt blocks on the embroidery machine, in the style I've been doing. Let me know in the comments when the video is done. So, yeah. And thanks, yes, Marianne, for reminding everyone. So, this is a lot of fun. I know you hear people saying, oh, embroidery is fun. This was actually fun for me. Um, it's easy and you get results by the end of the day. Can you imagine having a quilted wall hanging at the end of the day with the quilting that I love. It's awesome. I have a king size quilt that I need to quilt that I've put off. Now this gives me incentive to get it under the needle. Yeah, once you do the first hoopful, then you can breathe. It's, it's the hardest part is getting started. I was worried that I wouldn't like the thread. I was worried about different things like that. Um, but just do it. Honestly, it is well worth it. And it's easier than you think. So clear blue tiles is a lovely answer. If you don't have those in Canada, they were a little bit expensive. Uh, if you don't have them, then you can use templates. If you don't have that, then you can print a template and mark your center point. That's all you need to do. Um, that is easy as well. So you can do it old school. You can do it, uh, you know, with all the high tech stuff. If I had the upgrade, it's pretty cool. I will be showing you that if I ever get the upgrade. Uh, who knows if I will or not. <laughs> eventually i guess before the end of the year come on come on but there's so many ways of doing it but yeah get your needles going this is 
amazing. And this looks finished, and this looks just as good as, say, a long arm over quilting sort of thing. I love the quilting design too. Thanks, Robin. It is from Kimberbell, and I did put a link in the description if you guys want, but this was a lot of fun. This is um, good practice for show sewing and cutting two and a half by two and a half squares. So yeah, Jennifer says me too. Um, yeah, awesome. Uh, just do it. Just do it. I've had this guy hanging up waiting and I decided uh, yesterday, I'm not waiting anymore. I really want this done. And so I just did. I started uh, last night. I used the basting gun and this morning I just got right in and, and stitched. So thank you for this video. I have done quite a few quilts in the hoop and was not sure I was doing it right. Doing in the hoop quilting takes time, but very satisfying. Yeah, it really is. Sandy says, I found it easier just to hoop my fabric than lay the clear blue tile down, line it up and then move the needle where it needs to be much quicker. I didn't have a whole lot of room to play with on this one, so I didn't do it that way. I like to mark off a row so when I use the magnetic hoop, I can just bring everything over and I just find it easier. So Marianne says, I can't wait to get back to my machine, still nursing a scratched cornea. Uh, well, yeah, you'll be able to, you'll be able to stitch soon. So look at that. We did two hoopings. And I only have two more and my entire quilt is done. And then I can trim off all this excess front and back. <coughs> Sorry, batting and back and um, do the dreaded binding. Yeah, dreaded binding. I'm going to do a good job this time. Wow, that was quick. Six minutes for an 8 by 12 design. Yeah, it's quick. I honestly started at about 10 this morning, 10, 11, maybe. Yeah, I think it was later than that, actually. A couple hours, you can have a wall hanging done. So much fun. I love binding, Sue. Oh, why aren't you my neighbor so I can give you all my bindings? I don't know. I, I'm getting better. I'm getting much better, but it's still not great. Look how pretty that orange looks. Isn't that nice? And you can still see it on the orange, but not really. I love that. I love that. I was so happy with that. So if you have any questions, head on over to the OML Embroidery University Facebook group and ask away. The thread color, I forgot to say this, that I'm using is Exquisite, which is Dimes Thread. And the number is 646, and it is perfect for this design. If you have quilts that you need quilting, just do it. Just go for it. Once you do the first hooping, everything just comes together, and it's a lot easier than you think. And uh, frankly, it's fun. I most certainly have fun. I'm going to be finishing the last two blocks and then I will square it up and do everything tomorrow. So awesome. But yeah, any questions, hop on over there to the Facebook group and ask away. Uh, get quilting, people. Get quilting. So thanks, everyone, for watching. Don't forget to like this video for sure, if you like this video. And I'll see you guys on Saturday for the next video. Bye, everyone.